The following program is a presentation of Prime Sports. Compassion. Caring. Helping. For the past 16 years, police officers of Tacoma and Seattle have laid down their blues and their guns for one night. They exchanged them for pads and pigskins in an effort to improve the quality of life for small ones. And it's no different tonight. Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington, it's Bacon Bowl 17. Featuring the Seattle Badgers and the Tacoma Hawks. Hi everybody, I'm Tim Hunt and you are in for a treat tonight. These guys may be cops in real life, but when they step between the lines, they take this football game very, very seriously. And with four former NFL players and a slew of college experience out here, you're in for quite a football game. And joining us to analyze the football side of things is a guy who's seen quite a few bacon bowls, Dan Bartolovic. And it's, it's a pretty good game, isn't it, Dan? It will be a good game, and I know how to score. You have to use SWAT team tactics in order to score quickly. Then you have to handcuff your receivers, if you mind me saying that. And then you have to let the coach take care of the paperwork. The team that has the ball the most tonight may not be the team that wins. Look for a low score. Look for a good time. Look for a lot of money for charity. Yeah, it is a great charity event, and the question is, will one team have a bomb squad, and will one team use the shotgun? And joining us to talk about the police department side of things is uh, from the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, Ed Troyer. Ed, you know these guys personally. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here tonight. The record being 8-8 eight and eight for both teams. One of them's going to win tonight and go home ahead in the series. You know, this is one of the biggest charity events in the nation for a one-night football game. Since the inception of this, they've raised $1.5 million, $1.5 million for charity. And so tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about the charities and talk a little about what these guys do when they're not playing football, what they do on the streets and some of the police programs that are out there in your communities now. Yeah, Ed can give us some valuable insight into exactly what these guys do every day in uniform. We also can give you some insight in this game as to what's going on down on the field. We have a unique opportunity to get inside the huddles. We have a sideline reporter on each sideline, and right now they're together, John Robertson and Lyle Benjamin. Guys? Okay, guys, thanks. We're down here on the Seattle sidelines, and I'll be covering them with interviews of the coaches, players, and maybe even some of the fans. And this is my partner. I'll be on the Tacoma sideline bringing you player interviews and coaches' interviews and all the action from down on the Tacoma perspective, Tacoma sideline. Now back up to Tim, Dan, and Ed in the Press Box 1995 Bacon Bowl. All right, guys, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing from you as the game progresses. Now I want to tell you about two guys who will have a huge impact on the way this game goes, the quarterbacks. First of all, for Seattle, a guy who's been around in the Bacon Bowl, playing in his ninth Bacon Bowl, Eric Barden, the 5'11", 178-pounder. He actually played a little bit of football at the University of Washington. And for Tacoma, the starting quarterback is another guy who's no stranger to Bacon Bowl competition, Lonnie Eklund, number 12 for the Hogs in his fourth Bacon Bowl. Lonnie's a Washington State Patrolman. So those guys will be at the helm of their respective teams. We'll run through the entire starting lineups, and we'll have the opening kickoff of Bacon Bowl 17 when we come back. Bacon Bowl 17 is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Tapco Credit Union, Coca-Cola, and Bill's Towing. Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. What does AT&T have to do with it? For the sidekicks, it's finding alternative transportation to the big game. For Joan Piper, it's sending email from her laptop to an associate's messaging device hundreds of miles away. 
And to Dave Coates, it's dialing his cellular phone with just call home. His voice. Introducing AT&T Wireless Services, technology that sets you free. Call 1-800-IMAGINE. Back at the Tacoma Dome, where Tacoma has won the toss and elected, actually Seattle won the toss and deferred to the second half, so Tacoma has elected to receive the opening kickoff here to begin Bacon Bowl 17, and kicking off for the Seattle Badgers will be a veteran of uh, several Bacon Bowls, Joel Nark. If you watched last year's game, he was up in the booth with us. He took the year off and didn't play, but he's back and handling the kicking chores for Seattle today. Again, a good crowd on hand at the Tacoma Dome. This is a very exciting event. All the money, as Ed told you, goes to charity. Over a million and a half dollars raised so far, and the number just keeps on growing for children's charities. Here you get a look at Joel Nark. Number eight in the Seattle Badger white jersey with the blue numerals. They are, of course, the road team in this game. This is the first time Seattle's been the road team in quite a few years. This game has been played in the Kingdome for the last three years after six straight here in the Tacoma Dome. They've moved back to Tacoma this year, and uh, Seattle won all of those games in the Kingdome. In fact, they've won five in a row, so maybe the home field advantage will pay off for the Hogs of Tacoma. Back deep for the Hogs will be Richard LaMonica and Reggie Chapman. They're two safeties on the defensive side of the ball. But the ball is kicked short and is taken by an up back out across the 30. And he's got a big hole. He could go. Nark is the only man to beat for Andrew Hankins. Dropped out of bounds at the 22. Big return for Andrew Hankins, one of the upbacks. Maybe they should have had him deep. They should have had him deep, but he was at the right place at the right time. I told you about SWAT team tactics. you got to score quick and score often. If you don't do both, you're not going to win. Well, Tacoma didn't score at all last year. In fact, the first half of last year's Bacon Bowl was very sloppy, but a big start for the Hogs of Tacoma. They'll start first and 10 at the Seattle 23-yard line. And bringing them out, as we told you, Lonnie Eklund. He has Dave Schaefer and Terrence Kyer as the split backs behind him. Scott Brown is the wide receiver split to the near side of the formation. And this is Schaefer's first carry ever in a football game for about two yards. Dave Schaefer tells me he did play a little bit of football, he tells me, in the... Uh, in the army or in, a, in high school and he played in an alumni game about five years ago there's the a look at the offense Eklund Schaefer Kyer Stump Brown and Dahl are the uh, receivers and the offensive line Daniel Still Timothy Brown Barry McCollman another Bacon Bowl veteran Peter Kropp and G Greg Ulrich actually all those guys Bacon Bowl veterans second and eight now for the Hogs of Tacoma same running backs now That's Schaefer in motion, and yeah. that's a busted play. And you, you got to do something on the count of four. If you're going to audibleize, obviously, you had to let everybody know these guys aren't uh, the well-oiled machine you would expect of a college or a professional team, Tim. And I think somebody uh, got kind of confused on the count, figured, well, oh, I'll start something. Yeah. Ball start. You know, it is amazing, though, how um, well-oiled they are, given that they only practice 12 times. They practice twice a week for six weeks. And that's all they have to practice together. And look at the clock. We're playing 15-minute quarters. This is going to be a test of time and endurance. And who's the least tiresome at the fourth quarter should be a factor here. All athletes, all athletic. Most police officers are athletic. These guys all very athletic and work out. But playing 60 minutes of football is a whole different ball game. It's coming out with high backs, as you can see. And straight up the middle, Seattle smothers the play. By the way, that was C.P. Taylor in motion across the formation. Oddly enough, he is a second-string quarterback, but he's playing wide receiver at times in this game. You see the Seattle defense front seven. Shelton Robinson, number 51, that is the former Seattle Seahawk. And you look down a little bit further, the S-back, strong back, number 21, Vic Miner, also a former Seattle Seahawk. So the Seattle defense with two former NFL players in its starting lineup. There you see the corners and the safeties. Spadoni and Tobain, two outstanding cornerbacks. Third and long now for Tacoma, about 13 yards to go. And again, a give and some confusion in the background of Terrence Kyer is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play there by Everett Edwards and Pat Lunnick. 
Make that Everett Edwards and F.J. Miles for Seattle. Well, they saw him coming, and obviously when you bump into your running back, you know bad things are going to happen. But, uh, Ed, I'm sure that these guys are going to get on the same page before the night is through. One of the things we've seen through these Bacon Bowl games is the game goes on, it gets a little bit smoother, and you'll see the offenses open up a lot. Tim Fredericks will come on now for Tacoma and attempt a field goal, a long field goal. He's putting his tee down on the 35, near the 36-yard line, so this will be a 46-yard field goal attempt. It will not equal the longest in Baker Bowl history. That's officially listed at 49 yards, although Joel Nark will tell you it was actually longer than that. But Tim Frederick here out of the hold of C.P. Taylor. It's down, it's up, it's well short. So the Tacoma Hogs waste the opening long kickoff return by Andrew Hankins, a nice hold by the Seattle defense. Well, Tacoma's expecting a lot of that, I mean. We're going to take a timeout with a timeout on the field. There's no score in Bacon Bowl 17. She told me we're going to break. Usually when there's a dead ball situation like that, they'll go to break. Back at the Tacoma Dome, Seattle takes over here. This is Eric Barden with the give. Around the right side to number 41, Sam Brayboy, the running back, and a nice game for Brayboy on first and 10. Brayboy from Renton High School, played high school football down there, playing in his third Bacon Bowl. And here you see the starters, backs and receivers for Seattle. Barden at quarterback. The running backs are Brayboy, who just carried the ball, and Mike Sutta, Brett Smith, and Joe Elliott, two names you will probably hear a lot at wide receiver, and Tony Bailey, the tight end, alternates with Sean uh, Hamlin there. The offensive line, Peters, Kunze, Sanders, Dave, or Brian Krause, and Dave Clement are the linemen for Seattle. And on second down, they give straight ahead to Suddeth. And, or I make that first down. The, the carry was for a first down. They give straight ahead to Suddeth for just a couple. Well, look at the blocks all coming off the offensive line for Seattle. They're powered. They're really getting ready to come off the block. They're, everything is working the well it should be, and a couple of yards on the gain, and they're letting Tacoma know exactly what it's all about. And there you see the Tacoma front seven. Shell Mays, the brother of former University of Washington and Minnesota Viking Stafford Mays, who happens to be on the Seattle coaching staff, and linebacker number 90, Donald Walkinshaw, played some professional football for the San Diego Chargers. There's the Tacoma defensive secondary, Richard LaMonica, a cousin of former NFL quarterback, Darrell LaMonica, and that, my friends, was a sack of the quarterback by outside linebacker Robert Jackson. He had two sacks last year and gets right into the swing of things with a sack right there. Well, he got back, and let's take a look at the replay right now as he goes out. Somebody didn't miss uh, him at all. He just shot the gap, went right through, grabbed the man by the shoulder pads, make sure he can't wriggle out, and down he goes with the law. That was about as easy a sack as you could possibly get. Very little impedance on his way to the quarterback that time, and it brings up a third and 19. For the Badgers of Seattle, they'll go with one running back. That's Sutta. Three wide receivers in this formation. And the little swing pass to Brett Smith. He's in trouble right off the bat. Smith's first catch of the game goes for a loss of one. Back to the Tacoma, or back to their own 30-yard line. Make that, and it'll bring up a punting situation. Good isolation, but once you get the ball, you got to do something with it other than stutter step. You have to run left or right. He chose to run back to where the crowd was. He got arrested. I'm sorry. Don't do sick, huh? <laughs> it was him he in. It was him in. Mark Henry on to do the punting now for Seattle. Gets off an end over end kick taken by the up back and breaking away is Tacoma's Reggie Chapman out of bounds at about the 35 yard line. So another nice return for the special teams of the Hawks. Yeah, they must know something about the punting ability. They have hands on up men and get the ball and they start running real fast. And all of a sudden here, we've got another guy that comes in and gets them into uh, Seattle territory at the 35. Not a bad way to start your second offensive series. Interesting to see Chapman and LaMonica as the deep men on all the kicks. Reggie played five years at uh, Idaho State. Now he's a member of the police department down in uh, the Tacoma area has also almost made it to play with the Dallas Cowboys. I guess that's the closest Tacoma's got to a professional football player. <laughs> Eklund again under center now, and the pitch goes to Terrence Kyer, trying the left side, nice cutback move, and he's met by Shelton Robinson and dropped in his tracks at the 30. Shelton again, the former Seahawk, played actually seven years in the NFL, four of those with Seattle, the 6'1", 240-pounder, 
playing in his fourth bacon bowl is actually um, second on seattle in, in total tackles last year four solos four assists also had a forced fumble terrence kyer did a nice job running the football there but uh, shelton robinson not fooled for seattle pick up a five however brings up a second and five Tacoma with double tight ends. One wide receiver to the bottom of the screen is Jesus Villahermosa. We'll talk a lot about Jesus as the night wears on. Split back, straight drop to throw for Villahermosa over his head. And it's really not too tough to throw it over Villahermosa's head. At 5'7", 135. Yeah. What about it's this guy, Ed? Uh, he is indeed uh, a fascinating story in itself. Well, he's been missing from the Bacon Bowl for the last four years. Uh, in that four years, his life's changed a lot. He has a new wife and... Uh, uh, married into a new kid, and he has two kids that are one day apart in age. Um, he's still a member of the SWAT team and back strong as he ever was. And again, we will talk more about him. It's an interesting story why he began missing Bacon Bowls a few years ago after being quite an impact player for Tacoma in the early days of the Bacon Bowl. This time there's a play action fake. The pressure was on, but a nice throw over the middle. I believe that was the tight end. We'll see as he gets up. It was Mike Dahl on the receiving end of that play. Michael Dahl. And that's a first down for Tacoma. Dahl, the tight end, played college basketball at Western Washington University as we take another look at it. Nice play action fake. And Eklund did a good job to get rid of the ball. Dahl with a nice catch. This is Dahl's first competitive football game ever. Ever. Out of Lacey. And, of course, as you mentioned, he played at Western Washington University. Gave his college teammates a bunch of speeding tickets the first couple of years of his <laughs> career. But he's down here now. Great story. College basketball player. I talked to him before the game. First time ever with shoulder pads and the whole thing on, except maybe a couple games he said in the Army. So Tacoma again knocking on the door here. The fake pitch and the give up the middle. Not much there for Rob Jepson. Let's go down to the Seattle sidelines. Lyle Benj Benjamin, that is, standing by with Eric Barton. Lyle. Okay, thanks guys. Down here with Eric Barton. Eric, this is your ninth start in a row. You guys are going for your sixth win in a row. What's the defense going to be doing against you tonight? I think they're going to come pretty hard and try and disrupt us in the backfield and, and uh, see what they can do to keep from giving me time to throw. I think we got pretty uh, dangerous threats at wide receivers, so they're going to try and keep the ball out of their hands. Have you guys got any special plays in store for them? Well, we got a couple of plays that might be entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to you guys. All right, thanks, Lyle. I think one thing that you will see after attending a Seattle practice, if I can give away a trade secret, is you will see that man rolling out a lot more than they ever have before. They're going to sprint him out to get away from that inside pressure they expect from Tacoma. Holding was the call there. There was a penalty flag on that last play, holding against the Hogs. So they go from knocking on the door to approaching the front porch here, um, back to the 28-yard line of Seattle, where it'll be first and about 20. Nice field angle view of Bacon Bowl 17. Straight back to pass is Eklund. Andrew Hankins over the middle. Nice move to get away from one man fumble. It looked as though Tacoma recovered the football, but we'll wait as they unstack. No, Seattle's ball. The referee indicates it's Seattle's football. Well, Tacoma says otherwise, over the wait. A Seattle player came out of the stack with the ball, but I believe they're going to give it to Tacoma. We're looking at the replay as we look at the sidestep, the ball was down. Now he's out of fumble if he's down. That's the question in my mind's eye. The official has to see it the same. But look at it again. Here's the catch. He has control. He takes the hit. Down he goes. And, well, it could well have been a fumble. He didn't touch the ground when the ball left his hand. Well, it turns into a big pickup. Jeff Kruger came out of there with the ball for Seattle. But... Andrew Hankins gets the benefit of the doubt here, and it'll be second down now and only about eight. Make it seven for the Tacoma Hogs on the Seattle 15. Eklund over the middle of Dennis Moore. And Moore hit hard and dropped at the 10-yard line. Dennis Moore, the leading receiver all time in Bacon Bowl history, did not start tonight's game, despite having that distinction, playing in his ninth Bacon Bowl. We'll get another look at it from ground level. Nice catch and a nice hit. Oh, Kazda really puts a clinical open field tackle on him. If you're watching at home, and we know you are, kids, this is how you do it. Jason, show. Jason Kazner at 5'7", 150 pounds against uh, Dennis Moore, who outweighs him by 20 pounds and has four inches on him, but a nice stick. Real nice stick. Third and short yardage now for the Hogs. Make it uh, about two yards in the backfield now. It's Rob Jepson. And it looks like 
Dennis Conker, possibly. He wants to throw. That's been getting out of trouble. He's got a man. Touchdown. Caught. Dennis Moore. What a catch by Dennis Moore, the leading receiver in Bacon Bowl history. Well, not only that, it was a Steve Largent catch, and we all know who Steve Largent is. Outstanding. We can take a look at the, the play when it comes on again, and here it comes off of your screen right now. You see the play action fake, and here's where the quarterback is in trouble. He's telling his men to help me out. Help, help, help. Here's the throw, fully extended into the end zone. A little bit of turf burn, but we'll take the six. Boy, great job that time by Lonnie Eklund to avoid the coverage and sprint out there. Dennis Moore waving his arms, had one step on Mark Spadoni, and that's all it took, Ed. Dennis Moore, uh, 34 years old, has nine years with the Tacoma Police Department. Tacoma with its first lead in a bacon bowl in a long time. They got shut out last year. Tim Fredericks adds the extra point, and it's seven to nothing. That was a five play, 35 yard drive, culminating in a touchdown pass from Lonnie Eklund to Dennis Moore. Seven nothing Tacoma. We'll be back with more of Bacon Bowl 17 right after this. designated driver. It has been, as I said, quite some time since Tacoma has found the end zone. There must be something to this home field advantage. They come home to the Tacoma Dome, and look at that play. What a catch by Dennis Moore. It's no secret why he is the leading receiver in Bacon Bowl history. He's had, coming in, he had 26 catches for 283 yards, but only one touchdown in his nine years in the Bacon Bowl. Make it two with a huge play there for Tacoma in the early lead. Four minutes and 53 seconds left to play here in quarter number one. And teeing it up will be Mark Crandall. He'll do the kickoff duties. Tim Fredericks handles the extra points and field goals, but Crandall has a little bit stronger leg on the kickoff. Back deep to receive for Seattle will be Joe Elliott and Brett Smith, and either of those guys are capable of breaking this. There's Elliott. Up the middle, he's got speed. He's dropped, though, as he crosses the 30 and over to the 35-yard line. Let's go down to the man who made the touchdown. He's with our John Robertson. John. Thanks, Tim. I'm right here with number 84, Dennis Moore. Dennis, excellent catch. You guys are up early, 7-zip. What kind of patterns you run? Uh, it was a drag pattern, but a five-yard deep drag pattern. Uh, we had a, a fake dive call. I was on the far side of the formation. Didn't think I'd actually get there in time, but I uh, thought Lonnie was being chased around a bit. Once we had eye contact, though, pretty much... We pretty much knew we had it there. And he gave me a little more lead than I expected. I was able to catch it. All right. E excellent catch. It's 7-0 it's Tacoma. We'll be back. All right. Thanks a lot, John. That gives Sam Brayboy does not go too far. I think he picked up about three up to the 40-yard line. There is a Badger down on the field. We'll see who that is as the trainers come on. And you get a look at Sam Brayboy, 6-foot, 195-pounders, the Seattle Police Department. And it looks like it could be number 85, Tony Bailey. Seattle's starting tight end. It is down on all fours on the field. You know, it's interesting. Seattle draws its players only primarily from the Seattle Police Department. Tacoma has a much smaller police department, so they draw from the Pierce County Sheriff's uh, Department where you're right. from, they, as well as Washington State Patrol. Any, any small agency, Seattle, um, is alone. Tacoma uses the state patrol, the sheriffs, Tacoma police, and little towns in the area. Still doesn't equal the same amount of officers that Seattle allows to draw from. So it keeps it fair. Okay. They wouldn't be able to field a team if they just used the Tacoma Police Department. They're not large enough. All right, Tony Bailey up and walking off, and we would like to thank KCPQ 13 Fox for all their help in our free production tonight. Did an outstanding job in helping us prepare for this game and all the graphics that you see. Again, KCPQ 13 Fox. Seattle now in business, second down and seven yards to go for Eric Barton, and he throws a little swing pass out here to Brayboy. Had some room, but it's closed off in a hurry by Vaughn Narcisse and company for Tacoma. Good job coming up and helping and support the cornerback Narcisse along with 
Some help from Shane Weirish, the uh, linebacker. Very important defensive series for Tacoma. They come back off a score. It's very important that they shut Seattle down to keep the momentum for their side. It's not a cliche. It's a matter of fact in football right here. And so far, Tacoma's doing the job. Yeah, great job there. Actually, probably a loss of one on that play. So it's going to bring up third and long again for Seattle. Third and eight for Eric Barton and company. Straight back to pass and being chased. Here's the sprint out I told you about. He can run if he wants to, but he throws over the middle. That was intended for Sean Hamlin, the tight end. Nice defensive play again by Tacoma over there. Try to get a look and see who that was. Very well could have been Donald Cypher. I think it was the 6'2", 195-pound quarterback playing in his fourth bacon bowl. He is a Washington State Patrolman. Just wanted to see exactly at the angle of the hit right here. Watch as he rolls out. Barton's rolling out to his right, sees his receiver, throws on the run. Good throw. Good defense. You might call that incidental, non-incidental contact. If uh, if the defender's reaching over him, it might have been pass interference. Mark Henry in to punt for the second time. Chapman broke it last time. Some pressure on. Almost blocked, but he gets away a high floating kick. This time Chapman calls the fair catch and makes it at the 37-yard line. No big return that time for Tacoma, but they have decent field position. They'll be in business at their own 37-yard line. They're already ahead in this game, 7 to nothing. Their defense has been outstanding. And the defense gave them the field position with the punt and everything else. All right, we're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with Tacoma's drive. Three minutes, 15 seconds left in the first quarter. The Hogs lead it 7 to nothing. Just one of many great finishes in Bacon Bowl history. This game is always close. Year after year after year, no matter what happens, this game seems to come right down to the wire. Tacoma now, first and 10 at, the, at their own 37-yard line. And to give to Terrence Kyer. Nice move to get away from one tackler, but he's forced out of bounds after a very short gain. On defense, Butch Kaysen. From his inside linebacker spot, six foot, 200 pounder. 36 years old, playing in his second Bacon Bowl. And Tacoma has a new quarterback. Dave Yerberry's in there. You know, give him a chance to see who can do most in the runs. You talk about the runs and the sprint outs. Maybe with 15-minute quarters, these guys are going to run out of sprints. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Lonnie Eklund with a nice job last time, doing a nice job of rolling out and throwing the pass, but they're going to give Yerberry a chance. In his second bacon ball, I think this is his first action, and dropped in his tracks there before he could even get starter. started is Rob Jepson. Well, new quarterback, new handoff features and signals and everything else that comes with it, and you know it always makes for uh, a little bit of uh, confusion, but they'll get to know each other before the night is through. Both defenses have been more impressive than the offenses, which is what you would expect. And I, I expect John Gartenhire to be out there, Ed. I want to know why he's not. Don't know that. I know Yearberry is also a second-year member of the Tacoma Police Department. His father is also a detective with the Tacoma Police Department. So it's in the blood. Yearberry family. The this time he's in trouble. Rolls away from the pressure of Shelton Robinson. There's a flag on the play. Yearberry just throws it away, but I think we're going to get uh, Tacoma holding on the play. Shelton Robinson on the blitz that time, or coming from his actually defensive tackle position, not necessarily blitzing, had all kinds of pressure on the quarterback there. Well, we were kind of looking for the replay, but there definitely was a hold, and you lean into your man the wrong way, and you start uh, leaning on him to uh, gaining gravity against him. It's going to be a hold. It was rather obvious. So they'll march it off. Boy, that's going to bring up a third and very long situation for... Look in your screen home. right now. There you see the lean and getting Holding away. Holding against the offense. It has been declined. Fourth down. Didn't last long, but it was just enough for a brush block and a hold and the flag to be thrown. Makes sense to decline that penalty. Brings up a fourth down and a punting situation for Tacoma. Their first punt. Their first drive stopped at a missed field goal. Second drive culminated in a touchdown. This time, though, they will have to punt. And I believe it will be Troy Davis. We'll see as they come out of the huddle. It will. 
Troy Davis, a bacon bowl rookie. Back to punt, and Brett Smith is deep for Seattle. He's the all-time leading punt receiver, punt returner, that is, in bacon bowl history. Nice snap to Davis, and he gets it away under some pressure. Smith retreats to the 25. Gets away from one man. He's got some room. Brett Smith at the 40. Across midfield, he's going to go. He's going to go. Brett Smith, touchdown, Badger. No flags. 75 yards. It might be a record for Bacon Bowl. 75 yards. It is without a doubt a Bacon Bowl record for Brett Smith. Here we have the replay coming right now. Smith juggles it a little bit, little snow cone. Maybe that's what threw his defender off. Swings it around to the outside. Can't get that man. He's out in open stances. By the time he hits the 50, he's heading. Look at that great block oh. thrown right there once again. That block, giving that block credit to Jason Kasner that set him up all the way for the score. That block was definitely the key moment, and he beat Shell Mays initially. Shell Mays was the one that had a shot at him when he first caught the football, but he got around him. Brett Smith's also a coach at Summit High School. He's a six-year veteran in the Seattle Police Department and has four years' experience playing football with UW. He actually coached that Summit boys basketball team to the state tournament this year. Got a lot of pub for it. Here's the extra point attempt by Nark. It is no good. He missed it wide right. So Tacoma holds on to the lead. But, you know, Brett Smith told me he'd return a punt for a touchdown. He's told me that every year, though. This year, he delivers almost in the past this time all the way for a touchdown. What a play. A big play by one of Seattle's big play guys. There he is, Brett Smith. Yeah. All right, we're, let's go down on the sidelines to John Robertson standing by with one of the grizzled vets of the Bacon Bowl. John? Well, thanks, Tim. I'm down here with exactly that, one of the grizzled vets. It's Jim Wagonblast. Jim, how's it feel to be this number 17 out here for you? Well, it's getting kind of tired, but I come out because uh, I, I, I've got a personal goal. I, I, I try and uh, uh, be the one that has played in the most Bacon Bowls, and I would put a challenge out to any of these new guys that are just coming out to try and play in as many as I have. Just keep the string going, and... We're going to win the game today. I know that. All right. Good luck. The Cal Ripken of the Bacon Bowl. We're going over to Lyle on Seattle sideline right now. Thanks, guys. Down here with Brad Smith, the man of the moment. Tell me about the return. Well, the uh, defense held up the men really well. I just had uh, one guy to beat at the start. Then after that, uh, uh, Jason Kasner laid out a great block to free me for the last one. I didn't have to beat anybody. It was a great team effort there on that return. Tim said you were going to return a punt uh, for a touchdown the last three years. Maybe this is the first one. Well, I think I've said it for the last five years, and this is the first one finally. And I just told the official, too, when I was standing back there waiting for the kick that this may be the one I finally get to return. He kind of gave me a high five when I came back out. Good job. All right, back up to you, Tim. Wait a minute. I thought he was a, such a well-conditioned athlete. He could run 75 yards without being out of breath. I'm going to have to talk to him about that. He's got to work on his conditioning. Great play. Again, Brett is counted on to be one of the big play guys for Seattle. He delivers there. And Joel Nark now will deliver the kickoff. Again, LaMonica and Chapman back deep for the Hogs. And this will be LaMonica at the 8. Got to crease up the middle. Boy, that might have been a touchdown saving tackle there by Shandy Cobain for Seattle as LaMonica returned it out to the 39-yard line. This has been a, a game of big returns big plays in the special teams so far. Well, we haven't said much about special teams, but they're pretty much setting the tempo for the ball game on the punt and the kickoff returns, and nice tackle by Cobain. Again, a good open field tackle. You know, in talking with both coaches before this game, they were in agreement, and, and the coaches are an interesting story that we'll touch on in just a moment, but both were concerned about turnovers. They said the team that makes the fewest mistakes here today will win. So far, we've had turnover-free football, and we're nearing the end of the first quarter. Last year, it was quite the opposite, so they're playing some pretty polished football here, both teams with new coaching staffs and new philosophies, new systems. Lonnie Eklund back in now as quarterback for the Hogs, and that ball is tipped before it gets to his intended receiver, Scott Brown, the wide receiver. Brown was covered for a moment, broke open, but as he threw it, it was tipped, and very close. Fell incomplete. And down on the sidelines, we see an injured Tacoma Hogs player. That is Daniel Still getting some work. He's an offensive lineman. These guys bang around in there, I'm telling you. As I said off the top, this, these are cops in real life, but when they get out here, they take this game very, very seriously. There's some very hard hitting. Both teams are extremely intent on winning this game, especially with the series tied the way it is. Eight wins apiece. Split backs now again behind Lonnie Eklund. The state patrolman barks out the signals. The quick toss on the slant across the middle to Denny Stump. 
makes the catch and goes down at the 48, about a yard shy of a first down. It'll bring up a third and about one. That was his original intent, the last play. It didn't develop, and the, the quick two-step, the, the drop back, the throw over the middle, he had a receiver right there, and that time it worked, and uh, it, it was covered the last time, and that's why he couldn't get the pass off. Interesting to see C.P. Taylor. He just went out of the uh, game at the top of your screen there. Number 14, he is listed as their second-string quarterback, but he has been in on several plays at wide receiver. Now we have Villar Hermosa in at the uh, bottom of the formation coming in motion toward the formation and the split backs behind Eklund who gives on the wraparound draw and it goes nowhere. Clarence Foster with his first carry in the ball game on third and one picked up about a half yard and he'll come up short. It's going to be fourth and a yard and Tacoma will be forced here into another punting situation. Lightning struck the last time they punted. We'll take a break, though, before the punt, because the first quarter has ended with our score. Tacoma 7, Seattle 6. Be right back. Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. Hand in Hand with John L. Scott is a community service program funded by the agents and employees of John L. Scott. Our program provides transportation support to assist food banks and other outside not-for-profit organizations with the delivery of food and other donated items. If your organization needs transportation for a community service program or event, call your local John L. Scott agent or 206-230-7622. Back at the Tacoma Dome, let's go down to the field for a special check presentation from Protection One. We at Protection One are very proud to be longtime supporters of the Bacon Bowl. And we invite other companies out there to join with us in support of this wonderful event for children's charities. So it's with great pleasure that we present you with a check for $1,000. On behalf of Bacon Bowl and all the charities that will benefit from this, I thank you very much. Thank you. That is how it's done, folks. Um, corporate sponsorships as well as tickets that they sell here for this game. They sell a lot of tickets. A lot of them go to kids at the various charities to give them a chance to come out and play or to come out and watch this game. And the corporations that get involved, it, it's just, it's great. There you see some of the kids we're talking about here enjoying the action at the Tacoma Dome. By the way, accepting that check on behalf of the Bacon Bowl was John Carlson, a longtime player here in the Bacon Bowl. He was injured in a motorcycle accident. He's a Seattle police motorcycle officer, injured last year on the streets of Seattle, not playing today, but still working in conjunction with the Bacon Bowl. Here's the punt to Brett Smith, who waits for it at his 25. Won't call a fair catch, but dropped in his tracks. We have a flag down. They may have hit him too soon. We'll wait and see. That was Gary Roberts down there on the coverage. He was actually standing behind Brett, just waiting for him to catch the ball. They may say that he called a fair catch yeah. and then started running. Let's wait and see what the call is. And we'll have to wait and see. I th that's what I thought, too, because he was kind of waving his arms back and forth. Dan Louie, the referee, is going to tell us what it is. And it will be against the Coleman. Interference. Interference with the with the uh, catch. You've got to give him, I, I believe it's two yards to catch the ball. I'm not really sure. We play here this game, by the way, by NCAA rules. It's played by college rules. Here Here's another look, look at, at it. it. Well, well I, I don't know where the interference came from. Unless interference uh, the opportunity to make a catch against the kicking team. First down. No, nope. it was a five-yard penalty, so Seattle will start instead of at the 26 at their own 31-yard line. And it's still Eric Barton at quarterback. He's number one all time among active players with about 85.9 yards of total offense per game. Rolling out, he's throwing deep. He wants Smith. It's hung up there and knocked away. A nice play at defensively by Von Narcisse. Actually, double coverage there. Narcisse and uh, number 45 for Tacoma. 
Or actually, that's Narcisse. I don't know who the other player was back there. It was LaMonica. LaMonica, I believe, was back there, too, and he really came up and uh, actually did the uh, damage of throwing it away. Bacon Bowl 17 is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Coca-Cola, Tapco Credit Union, and Bill's Towing. And now we're back to the action, and you see Sam Brayboy getting up off the carpet after about a four-yard carry to the right side. Just a little off-tackle play on first down for Seattle. And it'll bring up a second down and about six. There's Sam Brayboy. Only football experience prior to his uh, third, three bacon bowls was high school football again at Renton High School, but he's done an outstanding job running the football from the running back position for the Seattle Badgers. Harden sprints out and throws for Smith way over everybody and out of bounds on the Dakota sideline. Not exactly what he intended. The coach down there, you heard the Tacoma coach Dave Frost asking, we've got him, Mike, asking if he had caught that ball, if it would have counted. I don't think so, Dave. <laughs> Dave works in the Tacoma Police Department. His first year coaching the Tacoma Hawks says he's had a lot of fun doing it. He's a former player. In fact, he was one of the organizers of Baconville back in the early days, 17 years ago. Mark Henry in to do the punting now. Big pressure and it's blocked. It was deflected straight up in the air. And Seattle will cover at the 49-yard line. So Seattle starts now with good field position right at midfield. Bill Edwards made the catch of the loose ball there at midfield. And that's where, uh, that's where I should say Tacoma will start now. First and 10, they're in business. We're going to take a timeout. Again, our score remains Tacoma 7 and Seattle 6. Another child. That's what this game is all about. All the money raised by the Bacon Bowl goes to Children's Charities. One of, if not the largest, charity football games in the United States. We're fortunate enough to have it right here in our cities every year. And these police officers do a great job. Boy, they give up a lot of their own time to practice twice a week for six weeks leading up to this game. And they all get together afterwards for some socializing, and they have a lot of fun. But leading up to this game, believe me, as you go to the practices, you talk to the players, you talk to the coaches, they don't want you to share any of their secrets. There no. always are secrets. It's a very, very intense rivalry, one that you look at a guy like Jim Wagonblast, who we interviewed earlier on the sidelines, he and Murphy Kahuhu are now the only two players who have played in every bacon bowl who are still active. Those guys just, it's in their blood. They just keep coming back and coming back and coming back. They can't get enough. There you see a look at the sidelines. The coach is coaching. Again, it's, they take it as seriously as, as they, they possibly can. This is Dave Yerbury back in at quarterback as they alternate on possessions. Throw over the middle. That was intended for Scott Brown, and I think we're going to have pass interference. Oh, yeah, that's coming all the way. We've got it coming. I believe we're going to call that on Mark Spadoni. Spadoni climbed the ladder. Two flags are down, so I can guarantee you that uh, that one was a no-brainer right there. Pretty easy to call. It was actually double coverage, but I think you're right. Spadoni was the man who hit him. We'll take another look at it. It was a nice ball by Yerbury. On target, but uh, Spadoni hit him from behind. And number 18, Nick Carter, the safety coming from the other side. They both got a piece of him. There you see it again, definitely. Spadoni was there early, grabbing a little piece of uh, Brown's arm. So it'll be first and 10 now for Tacoma again, marching down into Seattle territory. The ball down at the 36-yard line. To give this time straight up the middle. Jepson makes a nice move inside where Shelton Robinson finally stands him up and knocks him back, but a big pickup. Six yards on the play for Jepson. Well, Shelton Robinson, who uh, a couple of bacon bowls uh, ago scored touchdowns as a running back, uh, got a little baptism there on how it is to play linebacker. And he held on until help arrived and made the tackle. But a nice gain all the way down to the 28-yard line. 
There's Dave Frost, the first year coach we talked about of the Tacoma Hogs. Why were you a quarterback? We can listen in. <laughs> Brushing up the chain game. No. I had no ambition to do this. <laughs> But he's having, he's enjoying every minute of it, believe me. Yearberry with the give to Terrence Kyer on the quick give up the middle, and he's very close to a first down. Dave Frost had no problem being Mike. In fact, he's allowed us access at halftime. We're going to take a sneak peek inside the Tacoma locker room, and that's going to be neat, something we never really get to see. So uh, let's go back and hear more from Dave here. He's marking it. You're going to call, call him for a measurement. Dave thinks he's working on the chain gang now. First down. <laughs> good call, coaches. Good call. <laughs> and there's Bob Stoll, Seattle's coach. Now, the name sounds familiar. Bob Stoll, he has been around. He's uh, 25 years in the coaching profession. He was the offensive coordinator at the University of Washington, head coach at the University of Missouri. He has been around. He's assembled an all-star coaching staff for Seattle. But right now, they've got their backs to the wall. First and 10, Tacoma. Jepson crashing up the middle. Dropped after a pickup of three or four, and I'll tell you, they'll take that all day long. And if they're going to get that, if, if Seattle's going to get back into their momentum again, they have to hit the line a little quicker. That time, the entire left side of the line of Tacoma pulling off in unison, making the hole and making it happen. Vic Miner came up from his strong back position. He sort of plays it like a defensive end. He tells me it's sort of like his safety position that he normally played, the one that he played in the NFL, but he plays, he begins at the line of scrimmage over the tight end, does number 21. There's another look at Bob Stull. He is the CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs, and they're a benefactor of this game, so he's volunteered his time to coach Seattle. This is a pitch to Kyer. Nowhere to go. Nice job by Vic Miner initially with the pursuit. And then a whole host of Seattle tacklers were over there. Butch Kaysen. Yeah, he needs something in for him. He wanted Shandy some Cobain. in for 42. One. We're all over there to make the stop as we get another look at it. Here's where the end has to do his stuff. And you need some blocking here. The end is supposed to come around on the pullout. And number 88, of course, uh, the guy from Lacey, uh, Michael Dahl, wasn't there. If he's making the block, we have yardage on that. Yeah, well, we got to cut him a little slack again. It's his first competitive football game. And he was really looking forward to it, I think. As I talked to him before the game, he's a big, tall target at tight end if they could ever get the ball his way. Maybe we'll see it here on third and nine. They're going to have to throw the football, although they come out with double tight ends and split backs. I interview fan, but remember he said to stay down here for the third. Newberry with a long count, and they give up the middle. That crossed Seattle up. And taking it down to near the 20-yard line is number 29, Clarence Foster, the Bacon Bowl rookie at running back for Tacoma. That'll be well short of the first down, however, and it'll bring up, I would imagine, a field goal situation here from the 21-yard line. It will be Tim Fredericks coming on. You get an up-close look at it. That did take Seattle by surprise. The give up the middle, but not enough of a surprise as Shandy Cobain came up to make the stop. Tim Fredericks this time will put his tee down. Let's see where he does. Looks like it is at about the 28-yard line, right on the hash mark on the 28. So it will be a 38-yard attempt. His first attempt from significantly longer distance was well short, but he can hit it from this distance. It's a bad snap. C.P. Taylor just covers it. Now he throws, and it's intercepted. No, now dropped. We'll see what they call it. For a brief moment, Nick Carter had it in his hands and, ha and was staring at the end zone about 70 yards away, and he couldn't hang on to it, so it goes as an incomplete pass, and Seattle takes over. I was thinking on, uh, while they were lining it up, what if they yell fire or ice or whatever it is they yell, and the bad snap comes back as we're going to come to a timeout. All right, let's take a commercial break. Tacoma in front by one. Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. What is why? What does AT&T have to do with it? For the sidekicks, it's finding alternative transportation to the big game. For Joan Piper, it's sending email from her laptop to an associate's messaging device hundreds of miles away. And to Dave Coates, it's dialing his cellular phone with just call home. His voice introducing AT&T wireless services, technology that sets you free. Call 1-800-IMAGINE. 
some of the color in the Tacoma Dome. And speaking of the color, let's go down to the sidelines. Lyle Benjamin, Lyle. Thanks, Dan. Down here with a fan from Auburn. His name is Ryan Hunt. Ryan, tell us why you're here at the game. I'm here to support the... Oh, I'm here to support uh, the charities at the... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to support the charities that uh, these two teams represent, the Mary Bridge and Children's Hospital and stuff like that. What do you think of the competition so far? Uh, so far, I think it's pretty good. I'm enjoying the game. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to watch them go after each other the way they are. All right, back to you guys. Ryan Hunt, no relation to Tim Hunt. Moi, here in the booth. There's your score with 8.55 remaining in the second quarter here been a well-played football game so far and Seattle now with it falls second and eight and a new quarterback Steve Redmond in for Seattle and that's Sam Brayboy around the right hand side went out of bounds at the 34 that's good enough for the first down nice running by Sam Brayboy and Steve Redmond the new quarterback last year was the bacon bowl MVP came in in relief of Eric Barden and went five out of eight for 53 yards and two touchdowns the only two touchdowns in the Bacon Bowl last year. One to Elliott, one to Smith. Six foot one, 210 pounder, 27 years old. Playing in his third Bacon Bowl. Three and a half years with the Seattle Police Department. Words of encouragement there on the Tacoma sidelines. You can see the uh, warmth of the Bacon Bowl beginning to take its toll. Guys are getting tired. It'll be interesting to see how they hold up here after nearly an hour of football in the fourth quarter. Fumble by Bray Boy, and he's back on top of it. I'll tell you, we have not seen a lot of that. We've seen a, a fumble by Tacoma that they ruled not a fumble. Now we've seen that one by Seattle, but it's been fairly clean so far. Off the line he comes, and uh, well, we'll take a look at the replay. There's a clean handoff as he takes it on the full sprint, and all of a sudden the loaf of bread falls. Oh, cover the pumpkin. He does. That's what you got to do. And from ground level, you see it just slid right through his hands. He never really had a handle on that football. Brayboy has been the workhorse out of the backfield, though, so far for Seattle. This time the draw to Suttoth goes nowhere. Met and dropped. Very nice defensive play as he rolls over. I'll pick up a number for you. 56 for Tacoma on the defensive play that time. That's Gary Kiefer, the defensive tackle from the Tacoma Police Department playing in his sixth bacon bowl. Six foot, 235 pounder. And he put all 235 pounds that time into Suttoth and then slid down and hung onto his ankles. If you're going to run the draw, though, you got to freeze your linebackers a little bit. That time he uh, had his halfback line up a little too close to it. He should have gone through, faked like he was going to pass. It never materialized. So Redmond faces a third and 12, and he's got a straight drop. This is Suttoth out of the backfield with some running room. Delivers a shot to Von Narcisse, but he's dropped just short of the first down. Let's go right down now to the Tacoma sidelines where John Robertson's standing by with one of the Bacon Bowl legends. John. Thanks, Tim. I'm down here with Jesus Villahermosa. And uh, Jesus, can you tell me why uh, over the last five years that you didn't get to play, this team didn't win? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, they didn't win. It wasn't because of me as far as I, I don't know that I would have made a difference, but I'm glad to be back. Uh, I really feel like I can contribute something. We have a lot of great players on this team, and I'm just, I'm just happy to be back, get my own number back, and, you know, play against Seattle. It's always a fun game, so... All right. It's great to have you back out here. Thanks, thanks. Back up to you guys. Boy, Mark Henry with a great punt. It takes a bad bounce. It's down by Seattle at the 32, but he hung that ball up high, just like they do in the NFL. It only goes for 28 yards with a bad bounce, but it was a nice high punt, not returnable for Tacoma. The Hogs will have it when we come back. There's one of the finest, Tacoma's finest, looking on from the comfortable seat of his bike. It's one of the talking motorcycles. One of the motorcycles especially made to go into the schools and talk to the kids. The motorcycle actually talks, answers questions. They put an officer in the back room and he runs a conversation with the kids to teach them out, you know, drug abuse resistance education. Is it true that they used to... Oh, uh, we've got a coach here. <laughs> His coach is arguing. Ron now, is there Lewis any from the Tacoma to the Police Department okay, getting a little excited down there. Okay, hey, we got three times. 
Is there any truth to the rumor, Ed, that you used to go in and talk to those kids, but they realized the motorcycle was smarter than you, so they started sending it in? <laughs> right, now I'm here with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you've, you've been demoted to this. <laughs> he hardly misses it. <laughs> Six minutes and 30 seconds left to go in half number one here of Bacon Bowl number 17, and we've got Lonnie Eklund back in the revolving door as they alternate series to the Tacoma quarterbacks. Brings his team up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Straight drop, throwing deep. Villa Hermosa, the guy we just talked to, has got it across midfield. And at five foot six and 150 pounds, he fights for extra yardage. All the way up to the Seattle 46 yard line. The defense by Jason Kasner there. But a great play by the little guy, Jesus Villa Hermosa. And you know, I wanted to mention about Jesus, he played in this game for years, but did not play starting five years ago after he was in a head on collision with a bank robber. That was why he missed his first couple bacon bowls, then some personal difficulties and some other injuries uh, forced him to miss the last few. But he's, as you heard him say, he's happy to be back. Look at the move. He gets by Kasner. Kasner, I think, expecting some deep help there. Didn't get it. Maybe looking for the run. Comes up to make the stop with some help from uh, Sean Jenkins there. But Tacoma again into Seattle territory. Terrence Kyer with a hole. Spins down to the 39-yard line. Oh, the momentum's now in Tacoma's side. They've got people like in the, you know, we talk about John Gardner, another story, Double Lodge, who was a foot cop in the Rainier District. He's not in there. He used to peel off two or three guys and make the tackle. Oh, you would know. You would know if Garden Hire was in there because that guy weighs 340 pounds and he filled up a lot of space in the middle. Some of the young fans coming up at halftime, we will see the Lakes High School drill team and band, the Washington State Patrol drill team, plus, of course, highlights and statistics from half number one of the Bacon Bowl. Tacoma hoping to create a highlight right here. Jepson coming your way and turning it upfield. A nice run, boy. Rob Jepson at fullback is running hard. That time up across the 25, down to the 22, a 16-yard gain. Well, they're clicking on all cylinders right now when a back like that gets the big open. You know there's people blocking on the line doing their job, and I can guarantee you as we look at the play again, here's the handoff. Got good blocking, cuts it to the outside, changes hands with the football as a good running back should, and then goes right through with it. So far, unofficially, Jepson, five carries, 29 yards, averaging almost six yards a pop. And Seattle can't afford to give that up here. There you see him getting a breather on the sideline, and Terrence Cairo will get it going the other way. Sean Jenkins in pursuit. Cairo outruns him. First down and more. Bumped out of bounds inside the Seattle 10. Oh, what a mismatch once he got downfield. He had that, the, the speed, and the man who was chasing him, of course, was Sean Jenkins at 5'7", 235 pounds. As we look at the replay, Jenkins is going to say, whoa, wait a minute, I can't run him down. It's a good thing he's not chasing a purse snatcher right here because he'd have lost the race. This is Terrence's third bacon bowl, and for his off-duty time, he lists one of his favorite hobbies is playing football. Oh. So, <laughs> well, he plays maybe get a few extra yards out Let's of him. Let's go! Definitely plays you're, well. you're around practice. <laughs> so we talk about knocking on the door. Boy, they're uh, just about in the front door here. Lonnie Eklund surveys the Seattle defense, maybe changing up the play here. Drops the pass. Oh, nice move to get away from the rush. Throws the fade and just overthrows his intended receiver down there, Wade White. Well, it was a smart move. He was covered. He threw it where it couldn't be intercepted. And if it would have been caught by either receiver or defender, it would have been out of bounds. So basically a throwaway. They're going jumbo. They're going jumbo. <laughs> So in other words, they're bringing in the beef here, and they're going to probably go, go with a couple, couple tight ends and just try to smash, play some smash mouth football, run it right at the interior of that Seattle defense. And that last play, I'll tell you, Bonnie Eklund almost lost his head to Everett Edwards, but did a nice job of ducking under the pressure. Touchdown right here, man. Touchdown right here. So let's take a look at the jumbo look, as you heard Coach Dave Frost call it. They've got one wide receiver. You see Andrew Hankins just going out of your screen there, and a trips formation in the backfield it's kind of a strange looking play but it works Dave Yerbury in for the touchdown Yerbury on the keeper scores the touchdown and Tacoma now out in front by a touchdown with the extra point pending that was what you call a wishbone formation of the backfield because when you get a wishbone formation the quarterback usually is going to carry the football nine times out of ten but hold the phone we have a penalty flag now it's coming back. I, I said it was a weird-looking play. This very well might be motion of some sort. It was just an odd-looking play from the start. See what they call it. Could have been an illegal formation. 
may very well have been some sort of motion. Let's wait and see. Dan Louie sorting it out. Okay, call, hey, time out. Time out! Time out! Tacoma wants a time out here to talk things over. Boy, they're backing it way up. It was illegal participation, so uh, that backs Tacoma way up. Bob Stoll likes it. Looking on, that saved his team a touchdown, and we'll see as they sort it out here. It's timeout Tacoma. Dave Frost will talk it over with his troops, and we'll talk it over up here. Three minutes, 41 seconds left in the second quarter. Let's take a timeout. Maybe some water out there for Ken. Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. Hand in Hand with John L. Scott is a community service program funded by the agents and employees of John L. Scott. Our program provides transportation support to assist food banks and other outside not-for-profit organizations with the delivery of food and other donated items. If your organization needs transportation for a community service program or event, call your local John L. Scott agent or 206-230-7622. Well, while we were away, we learned exactly why that play worked so well for Tacoma. They had 12 men on the field. The where extra we at? Where man we in the at? backfield, plus okay, everybody how much, on the line. What down is it? What down is it? Second down. Okay, let's get some yardage back. Bob Stoll and Dave Frost looking on. The pitch goes back. It's fumbled by Kyer. He went down to one knee, and I believe they'll blow it dead there, where his knee touched down on NCAA rules. You don't have to be touched. If your knee's down, you're down. A loss of five on second and long will bring up third and roughly a mile, about a country mile. It's going to be third and goal to go from the 28. Shelton Robinson gave an NFL hit on him, though, regardless of what the NCAA rules are all about. It's good to see the pad popping, and uh, maybe the Seahawks should be watching. You know? Yeah, they, can, they may use, <laughs> still be able to use Shelton. You know, Shelton, didn't. He, it's been a long time since he had to play by NCAA rules. In his mind, you're not down until he puts you down. There so. you go. <laughs> well, Dave Yerbury in the unenviable enviable position here of having to go 28 yards in one play. We'll see what they can pull out of their bag of tricks. Gerberry with a straight drop. He's got his man over the middle but throws it just too high. That was intended down there for Scott Brown. He's a big target, six foot 175, but overthrew him and it's going to bring up fourth down now and goal to go from the 28 for Tacoma. Let's go down now to John Robertson standing by with the president of the Bacon Bowl Association. John. Thanks, Tim. I'm here with uh, Harry ben and Benjamin, of course, president of the Bacon Bowl. Harry, you got a good crowd in the stands, yeah. good product on the field. What do you think? Well, I think it's a great game. It always has been. The only thing, I think the Mariners may have cut into us a little bit tonight. That wouldn't be too surprising. Uh, you put up uh, good numbers money-wise in years past. Uh, what do you expect out of this year? I hope at least $100,000 to go to charities, and so far we've done $1,430,000. Wow, that's good. Some of that's the good. players have become disabled. Some have died. Some have... And then there's a new group that's always ready to come help. So it's been a great, a great event. Okay, how, ma how many years have you been involved now? I've been involved all 17, but I started out as Miss Piggy walking around <laughs> and, and waving at the kids, and they throw peanuts in my face. And, and how have those been for you personally? Wonderful. This is the most wonderful group of people I have ever dealt with my whole life. And I've been part of law enforcement family for over 56 years. All right. So. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by and talking with us. Thank you. Tim, back to you. All right. Thanks, John. And thank you, Harriet. I'll tell you, she was miscast as Miss Piggy. She's a beautiful lady and does a great job. All the hours she puts in here, it's just unbelievable. As you saw, Tacoma went for it on fourth down, and the pass was batted down. And Seattle will take over now with Steve Redman back in there at quarterback. First and 10 at their own 28. They dodge a bullet there, boy. As you saw, a touchdown taken away from Tacoma. But a nice defensive play that time. Robert Jackson, the outside linebacker, trips up Brayboy before he can get started. That's going to be a loss of about three. Well, Seneth and Brayboy line up at the offset eye. That allows your up man to get a good block when you're sweeping to the outside. He's in position, but uh, it didn't bother Tacoma that time. They were reading his mail, as it were. <laughs> 
Well, the clock running at 2.05 left to play here in the second quarter. Would not be surprised to see Seattle go into a little bit of a hurry-up offense here. Maybe have a couple plays called trailing by one as time ticks away. Some pressure on Redmond. He throws for Elliott. And it's batted down. Nice defensive play over there by Reggie Chapman. The free safety playing in his 11th Bacon Bowl. He had a tryout with the Dallas Cowboys. Played football at Idaho State and is one of the great athletes even at the age of 34 here in that Tacoma defense, as he showed you there, boy, a lot of athletic ability went up high. Well, here it is. This is a clinical film. Use this for high school coaches. Go up high, play the ball, don't hit the receiver, come away with a great defense, get a star on your helmet, and you're only as good as your next block, though. <laughs> Double coverage that time on Joe Elliott. Tacoma has done a good job of taking him out of Seattle's game plan so far, but there's still a long way to go. Redmond with the play action fake. He's going to get drilled. Oh. You can see that a mile away. John McPherson coming untouched from his outside linebacker position. Just put a lick on Steve Redmond. Hit him from the blind side, and uh, the sirens are blowing and everything else after that big hit, but there's no getting around it. When you get through, and look at the replay right here, rolling it out, trying to protect his quarterback. Where did he come from? The blind side, down he goes. A little turf burn right there. You'll see it one more time rolling out. Somebody missed a blocking assignment. If that happens, that happens. And McPherson, the former Eastern Washington University Eagle, has the quarterback for lunch there, Ed. Boy, that was one of the big defensive plays here so far in this football game for Tacoma. A good crowd, even though the Seattle Mariners are playing the same night as the Bacon Bowl boys. Good crowd here in the Tacoma Dome, enjoying some very good football. As it always is, this Bacon Bowl is hard-hitting and fun to watch. Another thing is a lot of the money goes to, in fact, all the money goes to ch charities and children's charities. And over the years, some of the money has gone to the hearing impaired schools. It's furnished materials for building playgrounds and equipment for children of those parents that happen to be undergoing drug rehabilitation, which is at no fault the kid's fault, you know. They don't need to be part of that. They've also purchased pool time for therapy swimming and donate to preschools in low-income areas. They purchase clothing and toys for underprivileged kids at Christmas time. They support skiing, horseback riding for disabled children, and they also act as hosts to families that are coming into the area where the children are going to undergo bone marrow transportation. That's a very important thing. It, you know, it's a very traumatic thing for a family to have to do that. And the money that goes out to those, I mean, you can't even describe it when you talk to the people that are the recipients of it. These officers see where that money goes and it touches their heart, and that's why they're out here. Boy, Henry under some pressure gets a short, high kick that's going to take a great Seattle bounce. Picked up back there. I don't know how wisely by LaMonica, and he snowed under back near the 40 yard line. If I was LaMonica, that would have been poisoned, and I would have gotten out of there. That's uh, very, very dangerous territory picking that ball up. I remember a couple years ago at a bacon ball, Brett Smith did that exact thing. And the lost the handle on the football, and that can very work. easily now happen. Make it Rick, 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 <laughs> there you see one of the young fans in attendance will be able to attend many bacon balls here in the upcoming years. It's a cute shot of one of the fans here watching Bacon Bowl 17. Now Tacoma with another shot, 33 seconds left. We'll see if they go deep here. May not have time to go deep. Throws it away, but it's caught by Dennis Moore. And he gets first down yardage. I'm guessing that Lonnie Eklund was just trying to get rid of that football under heavy pressure hey, hey, from Everett hey, Edwards and Shelton Robinson. But he got rid of it to Dennis Moore, and uh, the clock has stopped at 25 seconds left. You heard the uh, argument that the clock was running there as the play started. They may put some more time back on the clock, and I think that's probably a good argument. Well, what a great sidearm delivery, too. I <laughs> signed that guy up for the Mariners. Well, I, I can't even imagine that he, he saw Dennis Moore there, but if he did, Lonnie Eklund with a great play. Across midfield now, 45 yards to go to Pater. 25 seconds to get there. This time the pass comes to the near side and just overthrown is Scott Brown. Just over his outstretched fingertips. The defense, Shandy Cobain. Lonnie Eklund doing an excellent job of throwing the football to where it can't be intercepted, but it can be caught. It just wasn't there for the angle on that particular reception. But, uh, hey, you can only do so much. Quarterbacks uh, are only as good as their receivers are. In, in this particular case, it was just out of reach. So 20 seconds now left to play in the first half. 
we've seen a lot of dave frost over on the tacoma sidelines tacoma's coaching staff is made up entirely of tacoma police department and police agency representatives seattle's on the other hand as i mentioned is an all star cast a lot of former n f l players that's well overthrown there a lot of former n f l players make up the seattle coaching staff including stafford mays who played for minnesota the list goes on and on they've got uh, lindsey mason who played with the raiders uh, Richard Harris, who played under Eddie Robinson at Grambling sure. University. Also played for the Seahawks for a time and the Chicago Bears. We had a nice talk about the Bears Packers rivalry because I used to, I spent some time in Green Bay as a, a sportscaster and, and uh, that's a hard fought <laughs> battle. Um, Frank Sloan is a, is a coach for them, played four year starter at Middle Tennessee State on both the football and baseball teams. It is literally an all star coaching staff assembled by Bob Stull in Seattle. 15 seconds left now, and it's third and 10. And the, the pressure is on Jepson, though, on the screen. The flag is down, but Jepson picking his way down and finally gets punched down. Shelton Robinson applying the final blow there. Nick Carter also there on the stop. A flag's down with three seconds left. The clock is stopped. I think this might come back, maybe against the Badgers, which really won't affect them either way. They're still going to have fourth down. Well, they'll have third down if the penalty is accepted and long yardage to go for a touchdown. And it looks like it will come back. So it'll be third. Did you call double tight? And about 50-some uh, yards to go double for tight. a touchdown here. And it makes me kind of wonder why would an official call holding with three seconds left, but an official doesn't look at the clock. An official looking right at the play on the line. Holding against the offense. Replay third down. We now have a timeout to green. All right, Tacoma takes a timeout to talk about it. Three seconds left here. They're going to try to design a, about a 60-yard play here. See if you see the hold. Oh, yeah, right up the middle. Yeah. I think they got the uh, center, the Barry center. McCollman, that time. His whistle for the hold. Isn't that his? Isn't this his last? This, is, this is Barry. Barry, Barry said it's his Where's last Tuchel? game. He's also known as BMAC on the streets. The gang Where's members Tuchel gave at? him a, uh, a nickname of BMAC and his partner, Bounty Hunter, because uh, they were real active police officers in the Tacoma area, real involved with the gang, put a lot of them away for a long time. <laughs> Which Good. is what it's all about. Hoping to put Seattle away hey, here staff, in the first half. You back. There's, what are you doing? Coach Stoll having a good time on the Seattle sidelines. Although don't let his easy demeanor <laughs> belie the fact I'm that wrong. he wants to win. Yeah. And he's a very competitive man. You don't coach 25 years of football without having some competitive juices flowing. And you better believe that he is very into this game and wants to win. He said that they installed an entirely new offense in Seattle this year in Bob Stull, and he said they actually put a lot in, but he wasn't sure how much they'd be able to use out here. But, boy, for having only 12 practices, they were managed to get a lot of new terminology and plays in the playbook. And let's see what Tacoma's come up with to go 58 yards in one play. A little dump pass over the middle is incomplete, and time expires. So their design play to go 58 yards was about a four-yard pass to Michael Dahl. Falls harmlessly to the turf, and halftime has arrived at the Tacoma Dome. Let's go down to John Robertson standing by on the sidelines, John. Thanks, Tim. I'm here with Coach David Frost. Uh, you've only had 12 practices? 12 practices. All we had this year so far. You guys came out and you dominated actually from the opening kick. Tacoma was I, real I good. thought we did real well, and I'm really proud of our defense. Uh, we still cut down a little bit of our mistakes in our offense. We're going to do some more uh, important things second half. Okay, 7-6 going into the locker room at halftime. you got to be pleased. I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased with the way the team's done, and I'm really happy both defense and offense. A few mistakes we got to correct, but we'll do it. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank coach. you. Bye. Back to Tim. Boy, thanks. He said it all there. Their defense has done an outstanding job. Seattle fully expected to put a lot of points on the board with that new offense of theirs. Unable to do so. They've got one touchdown via the punt return. That's all the points on the board for the Badgers. The Hogs of Tacoma have seven. Seattle has six. We'll be back right after this. designated driver. What is wireless? And what does AT&T have to do with it? For the sidekicks, it's finding alternative transportation to the big game. For Joan Piper, it's sending email from her laptop to an associate's messaging device hundreds of miles away. And to Dave Coates, it's dialing his cellular phone with just call home. his voice. 
Introducing AT&T Wireless Services, technology that sets you free. Call 1-800-IMAGINE. Bacon Bowl 17 halftime report is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Our halftime score at the Tacoma Dome is the home team seven, the visitors from up I-5 in Seattle six. And let's go down onto the Tacoma Dome field and enjoy some of the halftime entertainment.
It's halftime at Bacon Bowl 17. Tacoma out in front by a point. We'll be back with all the halftime statistics and first half highlights right after this. When you're out having a good time, it's nice to know you have a friend with a clear head to get you home safely. I'll get you home. The State Farm agents in your area support the designated driver program. Be a good neighbor. Be a designated driver. Insurance is puzzling sometimes, but your State Farm agent can put it all together for you. The best value in car insurance, low-cost coverage for your home, life insurance, coverage for your health. Everything fits together when all your family insurance needs are served by one person, your State Farm agent. Back at the Tacoma Dome where the score is Tacoma 7 and Seattle 6. I'm Tim Hunt along with Dan Bartolovic and Ed Troyer. Again, it's a great night of football here. It's been an outstanding game so far as advertised, don't you think, fellas? I think so. And we've seen two good things. Lots of great running, lots of good defense, no turnovers to speak of. We've had some situations where it looked like turnovers, but really nothing to sneeze at right now. Good second half, I predict. We're going to have a good ball game. Not only that, the team that has the most oxygen at the end of the game probably will win. Yeah. <laughs> Another prediction here. <laughs> Ed, before we get to you, we've got some insight. We're going to go inside Tacoma's locker room and check out, see what's happening inside. Some rare access you don't often get at a, uh, in a football telecast. There you see the Tacoma Hogs milling around, and Coach Dave Frost will give his uh, halftime speech. Don't turn over. Don't turn over. Don't turn over. Don't turn Boy, there's some tired hogs in that locker room, but it's great to be able to see what's going on in there. <laughs> tired, but uh, happy to be on TV, or maybe a little embarrassed to be on TV. By the way, while we were away, there was a special check presentation made um, from AT&T Wireless Services down on the field, and we wanted to mention those folks, just another corporate sponsor. Ed, I'll tell you, these guys, as we've, we've said all along, they are police officers. They're not football players professionally, but you wouldn't know it out here. No, you know, they practice six weeks. One of the things people also have to realize is during the practice and the game, it's all in their own time on top of it. And it's great to see this many people turn out, especially considering they had a little bit of competition with the Mariners tonight. And it's really great to see how many kids are here, as we've been seeing throughout the game, all the kids that have showed up. So, again, it's a successful event, and it's going to continue to be one. Yeah, I agree with that. Let's take a look at some of the first-half highlights, if we might. And there were two big highlights to speak of. We begin with the touchdown for the Tacoma bat or Tacoma Hogs. This was just a great play. Lonnie Eklund feeling the pressure, rolled out, and watch Dennis Moore. He waves his hand coming across the middle and then just makes an outstanding layout of a catch. The Bacon Bowl's all-time leading receiver with just his second touchdown. That gave Tacoma an early 7-0 lead. Seattle came back, though, with a punt return. Brett Smith bobbled it, then beat Shell Mays, broke the tackle. From there, it was he got a good block from Nick Carter, and watch the great block coming up here. Got an outstanding block along the way on his way to a 75-yard punt return. As he's, you heard him say, he has predicted a punt return touchdown every year for the last five years. Tonight he delivered, and that was his ninth or make that tenth touchdown in Bacon Bowl history. He's the all-time leading scorer in Bacon Bowl history. The stats tell an interesting story here. As you see, total number of offensive plays. Tacoma absolutely dominating there. 31 plays to 16. Dominating as well in rushing yards. This is amazing. Seattle with minus one yards rushing. The combination of Bray Boy and Suddeth not able to get on track there in the first half. Tacoma, as you see, with 56 yards rushing. Tacoma also with a huge advantage in total offense. They lead by about five times. Seattle with just nine yards of total offense with these stats to 143 for Tacoma. First downs, the same story. And penalties, that's hurt Tacoma. You heard Dave Frost talk about their mistakes. Four penalties for 42 yards. Seattle has yet to be penalized. All in all, a very clean game, as we said. Pretty much error-free football, as well as could be expected out here. 
and I think, as Dan said, more of the same coming up in the second half. It, it, they're just going to hit even harder. The intensity is going to be turned up a notch. We've got ourselves a close ball game again. Special teams did it in the first half for Seattle. If the special teams don't do it, we have a 7 nothing ball game right here. Tacoma's in the lead. So let's see what special teams do in the second half, and let's see what the tired or the fatigue factor brings into this ball game because they're playing 15 minute quarters and I'm getting tired watching them. Yeah, and they're in good shape. Police officers have to be in good shape, but this has to take its toll. Well, it does. Usually you'll start noticing it towards the end of the game, but it's really nice to see how far the game's come over the years. I mean, how the mistakes used to be at the beginning of the game, and here we've hardly seen any mistakes. It's been good, clean football. Can't tell the difference between watching this and any other caliber of game other than we know who's playing. Right. It's amazing to think there are NFL players out here. There are guys who played in high school and junior high, and that's their only experience. They meld together, put on a great night of football. We'll come back with the second half from the Tacoma Dome right after this.